Teaching coding to a different group of kids every week is a little bit like Groundhog Day. The faces are different, but the problems the kids are bringing me are frequently the same things over and over again. To help you new scratchers out there navigate some of the pitfalls of learning coding for the first time, I've asked my co-op students to compile a list of the top 10 most frequent noob errors made by new scratchers. Here it is. Number 10, Invisible Sprites. Sometimes after your game ends and you try to restart it, you'll find your sprites are missing. This is because you're hiding them at the end of the game. Scratch won't remember that you wanted to put your sprite visible unless you put it in the code, so make sure that you put a show block under the green flag to fix the problem. Number 9. Slow down there, buddy. When you add movement to your game, make sure that the values you put in aren't too big or else it will look messy and buggy. You can use smaller numbers and forever loops to make smoother movement. Here's two examples of how smaller movements will make your animations look a lot smoother. As you can see, the cat moves a lot faster than the dinosaur, but it looks worse. When the sprites spin, you can see that both sprites rotate exactly the same way, but the cat rotates by a bigger number. A circle is only 360 degrees, so if you try to make something spin faster than 360, it won't change anything. Number 8. Sound effect glitches in your game. The play sound and toe dumb block sounds like the right way to add sound effects to your video games, but this will often glitch out your movement. The reason for this is that this block pauses your code until the entire sound is finished playing. To fix this, use a start sound command instead of a play sound. But be careful. Sometimes, when you want to play a sound in a loop, you want your code to pause until the sound is done. Number 7. Your variables are showing. When you create a new variable, you'll notice that there is a checkbox beside your variable name. This is where you can choose to show or hide variables. Make sure you only show the ones that you really need to, for example, score, lives, or timer. Trust us, nobody cares about the Y position of every enemy on your screen. Number 6. Missing sounds. When you import sounds into your game, sometimes when you start code, you'll notice that your sounds are missing. This is because you imported them onto the wrong sprite. Make sure you put the sounds where you want to code them. Every sprite has its own code and the sound library and different sprites won't be able to use the resources. To move sounds, costumes, and even code between sprites, just drag and drop it into the sprite where you want it to go. Number 5. The image editor is broken. When new scratchers try to import sprites from outside of Scratch, they're often frustrated to find that the image editor doesn't let you resize or move them. This is because you're in bitmap mode, where the options are a lot different from the default way of displaying graphics vector mode. You're going to want to switch it to vector mode to be able to select your sprite and anything else you add. In vector mode, you can use this black arrow tool to select items so you can resize, move, or delete them. Number four, white backgrounds. Yuck. When you import backgrounds and sprites into Scratch, you'll often find there's a white background behind your image. To make your game look cleaner, Try clicking on the paint bucket tool and telling it to fill the white part of the image with transparent pixels. For even better results, load your image into remove.bg and use the power of AI to remove your background. This website looks best with pictures of people though, so it might not work on sprites that aren't pictures of people. Number 3. Move, don't glide. When you want to move your sprite in a video game, don't use glide blocks. To fix this problem, try simply changing the X and Y position of the sprite or pointing your sprite in a direction and then using the move steps block. Scratch's collision detection system doesn't work very well with glide blocks, and your sprites will sometimes not see each other when they cross paths. Number 2. Send the clones! When you want more than one kind of the same sprite in a game, a classic noob mistake is to duplicate the sprite. This gets really messy. Every time you make changes to your code, you need to modify every single sprite. What you can do is create a clone of your sprite using the create a clone of myself block from the control tab. After you make a clone, order it around the when I start a clone block. As you can see in this example, your project works the same either way, but a clone makes it a lot easier to tweak your project. Number 1. Glitchy movement. When new scratches try to move a sprite across the screen, they almost always use one of these hat blocks to trigger its movement. Big mistake! Try using an if block inside of a forever loop and you'll see a huge improvement in the lag time it takes before your character starts moving. 